What do the following activities have in common? Brass longevity and torture testing, case forming, and precision case prep for long range shooting. Gavin Gear here from ultimatereloader.com. All three require an annealing process and all three are on my to-do list. So I recently asked around who makes a great annealing machine and I got a lot of recommendations for annealing made perfect or amp. These guys down in New Zealand, Matt and Alex, really know what they're doing and are really deeply involved in research and make a great product. So in this video, I'm gonna take a look at the AMP Mark II annealer. I'm gonna unbox it, I'm gonna set up, and I'm gonna do a quick demo. But I got a lot more cool content coming up that I'm gonna work in conjunction with the folks down at AMP on. So make sure you're subscribed with notifications. Let's get on to opening this box. So, this has been sealed in New Zealand and I have not had a chance to look inside. Let's see what we've got. Okay, so a sticker, you know, who can't, who can't use that for their toolbox, right? And then a note from the owners. And here it is. Oh, look at this, a hat. I've got my own amp hat. <laughs> okay, so we've got pilots. These are the pilots that I indicated that I needed for various case forming and different types of annealing and reloading activities. Got a tube here, but I know what you guys want to see. You actually want to see the machine itself. <laughs> so, here we have the Amp Mark II. And you can see it's been packed very carefully. It's got this nice foam protective padding all the way around. It's got some desectant moisture absorbing material in there, and that's really nice. Okay, so this is the contents of the box. Let's take a look inside this tube. See what we've got in here. Okay, it is, let's see, a USB cable. We've got the primary power cable. We've got some rubber feet and a brass part here. Okay, oh yes, and this is, this is the cover for the machine. I like the fact that it comes with that as well. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna research how this machine works. I'm gonna walk you through the process of getting it set up and then we'll do some annealing. But I've got some instructions to read, so I'll see you in just a minute. So the machine comes essentially pre-assembled. There's only two things that you're gonna need to do. The first is to install the four rubber feet, which have these threaded studs. There's lock nuts, generous kind of rubber pads. That's gonna keep the machine level and you can adjust them individually. It's gonna keep it from skidding around. The second thing is to plug in the power cord. Then we can turn the machine on and we're gonna see it go through kind of a boot up sequence. And it's gonna ask us which mode we wanna use. There's standard mode, which was the Mark I operational mode for annealing cases, and then there's a mode called Aztec. Aztec is the default mode. It comes standard with all Mark II machines and it's available as a software unlock code if you have a Mark I machine. So we're gonna hit start. That's gonna select Aztec. And then it's gonna ask us whether we want to analyze a case or run. Run corresponds to a batch of annealing and then analyze is a process that the AMP machine goes through to bring the neck and the shoulder essentially up to its melting point. It's gonna distort it so that the machine can understand the properties of the case. You're gonna to wanna to run this for each brand of case, and if there's any differences in the neck itself, you're gonna to wanna to rerun that test. So, for instance, if you turned down the case next, you're gonna to wanna to run that again, because it's gonna take a little bit less heat to get it to the optimal temperature for the annealing process. So, we're gonna go ahead and hit Start, and then we select the pilot. And for 6.5 Creedmoor, I'm gonna do 6.5 Creedmoor and 308 Winchester to show you the switchover process. We're gonna use 17 uh, for the pilot number and the pilot code is A. The combination uh, together will tell the machine how it needs to operate. So when we hit start, that's like selecting. So zero, and then we need a one, and then a seven, and then we can hit A, A is correct, so we can hit start. Now, we are armed and ready to go. So what we need to do is 
remove the cap from our number 17 bushing. This is a pilot, this is the amp terminology for it. We're gonna screw that into the machine. This is gonna position the case optimally around that induction annealing coil. I'm gonna take my sacrificial case. I'm gonna use a shell holder. This is the 308 shell holder. I'm gonna stick it into the shell holder grip and then slide the case in. Now this enables you to insert and remove cases without burning your hands and that's a good thing. You're also gonna to need to have some sort of heat resistant tray of some sort. You can use a cookie sheet. I've got a stainless steel tray here ready to go. So then we can insert the grip, the shell holder and the case into the machine. When you hit start, it's gonna go through this sequence and generate the code. So it says the code is 133. And this corresponds to how much heat is put into the case and all of the properties of that annealing process. So we're gonna head, go ahead and hit use. And then we need to take the case, which you can see here has this distorted mouth and we'll set that aside. You can see the discoloration there as well. Now we insert another case, hit start to arm it and then start to anneal. <laughs> it's that quick. And you might wonder if it's really annealing. If you hold it up close to your skin, you can feel the heat radiating off of it. You don't want to touch it, obviously, because you're going to burn yourself. It's really amazing how quickly this thing works. I only hear like one little electronic click on these. So we'll do five of each. Once we get into a rhythm, it's going to go really, really quick. And I found if you give these, I don't know, 10 minutes or so to cool down depending on your ambient conditions and whatnot, they will be you know, ready to handle. And if they're still too warm, you just give them a little bit more time to cool down and you should be good to go. There we go, we just annealed five cases. So, switching over, we're gonna keep the grip with this shell holder, the 308 shell holder. We're gonna remove this pilot, put its cap back on. Go over to number 11. And we're gonna to need to go back to the main menu. To go back, you hit minus and then hit start. And then we can hit analyze or run. So we're gonna go ahead and select analyze. We're gonna select the pilot, this is 011B, 11B, okay. Now we need to take our sacrificial case, put it in the shell holder, drop it down, got the correct bushing installed so that we can go ahead and hit start. One, five, five. Go ahead and hit use. We should be writing these down if these are things that we're going to be using uh, for subsequent batches. You can see here again the mouth is distorted. That thing has been heating, heated to the breaking point. Okay, and we're ready to roll. So you can see it takes a little bit longer because of the increased mass for these cases. Just a little bit longer. Not much. And discoloration is not an indicator of whether a case has been annealed or how much it's been annealed. That has to do with the properties of the brass and any surface treatments that are on the brass. So you can see here, this military 308 brass doesn't really show the discoloration, but the Hornady cases did, and they actually had some annealing marks, if you will, on them from the factory. Very fast process. There we go. We've annealed five cases for two different cartridges. So when I'm done with an annealing session, I'm gonna turn the machine off and then remove the pilot, put the pilot back in its cap, and then put the dust plug in place so that debris and dust don't get inside the machine. And I wanted to hit on the kind of 
operating model and the construction of the amp machine real quick. I'm not going to go super in depth here, but the amp machine is an induction annealing machine. It's quick, it's very exact, and it gives a really good result. There are also people that anneal with flame or salt bath, and each process has its pros and its cons, but it's pretty much universally accepted that induction annealing is the best because of the way that it localizes the heat, the quickness, and the precision. And this particular machine, the Amp Mark II, has a ferrite core with Litz wire winding. It's pretty much industrial grade. In fact, Amp has released a video, I'll link to that in the video description, showing how the machines are made in New Zealand. It's really interesting and it shows you just how much there is to this technology. And they do a lot of research and development to validate the results that they're getting with this machine and to make it that much better and to even compare and contrast with other methods of annealing. So I'm going to do two things here on Ultimate Reloader. I'm going to be talking about the science of metal and brass and how that relates to some of the results that you're going to get. And I'm going to collaborate with AMP and I'm going to collaborate with other partners in the industry on that. And then I'm also going to do features where I'm actually using the annealing process to validate its effect on longevity or to take a look at a particular cartridge, anneal it, and then shoot it and look at how bullet seating force or the standard deviation of velocity is affected by annealing because those are two kind of major scenarios where you're going to want an annealing process. So make sure you're subscribed with notifications because I've got a lot more content coming up. I'm going to be forming cases, doing some of that science and research, and then using it for day in and day out precision long range applications. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I've got a full article with more details in the video description. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.